Are they late to Bitcoin? Is it too late to buy Bitcoin, Fred, and, and benefit from it? Oh, well, I mean, we're super early. We're very, very early. I mean, this is this is like we're at the beginning of a, probably a 20-year journey of massively high returns. It's, it's going to be, we're going to have massively high returns for 20 or maybe even 30 years. Uh, that, that's basically, I think, where we are. So, you know, it, it's, we're, you're, you're nowhere, you're at the beginning, like you're in the first inning. Uh, so I think you're not at all late. Bitcoin's rise is far from over. Now is the time to get in on the action to avoid missing out on massive gains ahead. That's the latest word from Wall Street veteran and mathematician Fred Krueger. We're still incredibly early in Bitcoin's journey, with less than 1% of wealthy individuals owning any Bitcoin. According to Kruger, this is just the beginning of what could be 20 to 30 years of massive returns. The feelings of being too late have been around since Bitcoin was $600 or even $100. But every new cycle proves there's more room to grow. Looking at Bitcoin today, even at $100,000, he believes it's still the first inning. The opportunities ahead are immense, with unprecedented gains on the horizon. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video as Fred Krueger shares more insightful information about the Bitcoin market. Also guys, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy staying up to date with finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Now here's Fred Krueger on why Bitcoin is still in its baby phase. I do think that we're in we're in kind of now for a long, a long, very positive route, similar to buying Apple stock, you know, in 2010 or something or Amazon in 2010, you know, and, you know, those I can tell you, look, I owned Apple in 2008 and I bought it when they first came out with the iPhone. I was like, oh, man, this thing's going to be great. The stock doubled, it did bad, and then it doubled. And it recouped after 2010. I said, oh, I'm done. I've Great trade, fantastic. Stock went up 50 times after that. <laughs> 50 times, okay? Apple has gone up 50 times from 2010 till now. That's crazy. And, and you know, did they have a new product? Not really. They had the watch, you know? Yeah. They had the watch, you know what I mean? The iPhone came out... Well, I still had Apple shares. So I, you know, I bought in a little bit uh, along the way, but I had a pretty big position in Apple. And, um, you know, uh, Amazon, you know, you could, you know, you could have avoided the crash of, uh, of 2000. But then afterwards, it's afterwards that I, even in the last decade, Amazon just did phenomenal, right? So, it was a very mature company, nothing fantastically new, or there was no, there was no strategic reserve that moved <laughs> Amazon up, right? Just went up, just kept on going up, right? So I think Bitcoin's going to be like that. It's going to be, it's not going to be like we need this strategic reserve, or we need this Saudi sheik to buy. It. This thing's just going to work. It, this thing will just work, and it will work. And really, you got to, you got to just extend your time frame to about a decade. And I think you got to figure out, okay, how do I make sure that I have Bitcoin, my core position throughout this decade? So whatever your plan is, you got to make sure that you don't, do not sell more than 20% of your Bitcoin for, for, for the next 10 years. So you got, you got that 20% you can play around with. You can do, you know, do whatever you want, but keep yeah. 80, as long as you keep 70 or 80%, the numbers are going to just, they're going to be amazing for you. Yeah, all of us old timers are going to be really, I think, are going to really, really benefit from just the the pure growth factor. And, that, and I think that the key is just to kind of keep a level head and stay calm and understand that there will be volatility and fine. You know, we're, we're OK with it. And it's honestly, it's volatility when you bought your you, you came in 2016. Right. So about. uh like five hundred dollar Bitcoin, right? Yep. Right. So first, first price, first, first Bitcoin was six hundred and seventy dollars. Okay, so six seventy. Yeah, I remember when it crossed a thousand. Man, that was that was a crazy time. Yeah. 
And I was like, um, again, right? Because, you know, of course it was there in 2013, but, you know, uh, you know, but yeah, the, uh, but you know, if you bought Bitcoin at 500 and it goes from a hundred thousand to 50,000, it hurts a little bit, it's, but it's not a panic attack, right? On the other hand, if you went huge all in right now at a hundred thousand, it goes and it sort of ticks down to 50,000. That's kind of that, that's where the, you know, you, you, you do have panic attacks at that point. So I think yeah. it gets, it gets easier as you're older, as you you're further into this, right? It definitely gets easier. Look, Michael Saylor came in a lot later than most of us did. I mean, yeah, he had a lot more I, capital though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm saying is you and I were, we predated Michael Saylor, right? Okay. And uh, for me, it was 2019 when I really saw the light, right? But, uh, and he was 2016, right? So Saylor is 2020, you know? So I think the, um, the thing about Saylor is though he, it wasn't only the capital, it's just he developed really strong conviction, you know, very, very early. Yes. And I think that's the difference, right? The difference is what's your level of conviction? How convinced are you that this thing called Bitcoin is actually going to be probably the foundation of the, the world financial economy 20 years from now, you know, and I, I can assess, I basically talk to some Bitcoiners and stuff. And that's sort of the first thing I internally try to figure out is, are they really as convinced as me that we are talking about something that will, will a hundred percent be uniform it'll have a hundred percent penetration down the road. Like, because I think a lot of people still don't, even if they made money, even if they were early, even if they got into the cycle, they still don't really think that they, they really don't think people are going to be using Bitcoin and they don't, they don't see the, you know, the end game of hyper Bitcoinization. But I think, I think, a, you know, there are a bunch of us who do, right? A bunch of us who really can see this thing and we, we were like, this is gonna this is gonna happen, you know. Yeah. I, I, I can't tell you exactly how it's gonna happen with what strategic reserve or this or that or I don't know, like, you know. But I can just tell you that I think Sailor's genius is that he realized, okay, this is definitely gonna happen. I I'm a hundred percent convinced this is gonna happen. You know. Given that he has that conviction, you know, how, how do you orient your portfolio given that conviction? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think he's done an amazing job at that, you know? Meanwhile, MicroStrategy has done it again, expanding its massive Bitcoin holdings with the acquisition of an additional 2,530 Bitcoin for $243 million. This purchase highlights the company's unstoppable belief in Bitcoin as a long-term strategic asset. This latest purchase further strengthens MicroStrategy's position as one of the largest corporate holders of Bitcoin, indicating continued confidence in the crypto's potential to redefine global finance. Now let's go back to more exciting outlooks from Fred Krueger. It's very possible that we get some completely insane blow off top. It is possible, right? Why? Because, you know, it's not going to be, but it won't be the same kind of people. It won't be, it won't be the kind of the degen retail from, you know, 2020, 2021, right? It, or 2017. It won't be, it won't be the same guys who bought Tron and, you know, and uh, FTX and, you know, Solana and stuff in 2020. What I think it's going to be is a bunch of extremely wealthy, rich people who all of a sudden sit there and go, Wait a second. I uh, I only own 0.01% of my net worth in IBIT. Maybe I increase that to 2%. And that if we get that shifting, you know, that that's that that'll just completely you know, that that's what could do it, right? Because there's so much of this money 
that's in real estate, that's in bonds, that's in, uh, in, in overpriced stocks. And they just, they don't have enough allocation. They, they have no allocation to Bitcoin. So I'm, to me, it's like complete and utter inevitability that that happens. But, you know, uh, these people are very, very, as you know, they're very, very, now we're still at the point where they're, they're bad mouthing Bitcoin. They're like, yeah, maybe not really an asset. No, there's no value, no intrinsic value. So it may take it may take a little longer than one year for them to completely come to. But I don't think it's going to take longer than five years. Mm. I think, you know, to me, the the horse race started a year ago with the ETF. Yes, because before the ETF, like you're some wealthy guy in Miami, right? You're, I mean, are you going to really? You're going to go buy a cold card <laughs> or <laughs> learn to use that thing and then and then move some money buy buy bitcoin on coinbase and then move that you're not going to do that right i mean the amount of the amount of wealthy people who do who do that it's, like, it's very small right and you know they're not going to leave they may have a coinbase account or something but they're not going to leave five million dollars on coinbase 10 million you know what i mean like you don't that's not what wealthy people do. You know, they have wealth managers, they're conservative. They have places, brokerage accounts that they had money in for 30, 50 years, you know? And I mean, I've had, a, I've had my Goldman Sachs account since I don't know, 1998, you know what I mean? Or 95, you know? So, you know, we're not, pe people, you know, people are cautious with their money. They're not, they're not like, oh, new paradigm, I'm going to put all my money in Coinbase. No, they're not going to do it. So I think it's going to change, but all they need to do is just allocate now a very small amount into IBIT or FBTC. And those guys are going to clean up. They're just going to clean up, you know, all the ETFs. But I mean, I think th those two in particular are just going to be, they're going to, IBIT is going to become bigger than the S&P, SPY. Oh, it it will. A, are they late to Bitcoin? Is it too late to buy Bitcoin, Fred, and, and benefit from it? Oh, well, I mean, we're super early. We're very, very early. I mean, this is, this is like, we're the beginning of a, probably a 20-year journey of massively high returns. It's, it's going to be, we're going to have massively high returns for 20 or maybe even 30 years. Uh, that, that's basically, I think where we are. So, you know, it, it's, we're, you're, you're nowhere, you're at the beginning, like you're in the first inning. Uh, so I think you're not at all late. Uh, and, you know, there's something, there's something very fractally about Bitcoin that it kind of like, you know, in a way 20, 24 is Bitcoin was never cheap. All right. Remember when you bought your first Bitcoin, Nico? It was expensive. I, I, I thought I lost the train. And look, I did. I was very young at the time. It was very kind of desperate point right. in my life. So I, I, for, but, but you know, it, it, the same feeling you have about, oh my God, is the, am I late? It's 2016. This thing is, this thing was discovered. Okay. Um, you know, seven years ago. <laughs> no, point, the, right? the point I was trying to make, Fred, is yeah. that like, so when I got in, it was, again, it was under a thousand bucks. And for the, the first cycle, so the first four years, I did whatever humanly possible to put as much as my income into Bitcoin. And I was very desperate and I wanted to get out of the situation that I was in. However, I thought I was late because I met people that bought Bitcoin under a hundred dollars. I bought Bitcoin. I met people that bought Bitcoin at a hundred dollars or $200. If I knew where Bitcoin would be today, instead of putting 80% of what I had, I think I would have put 95 to a hundred. I think right. I would have borrowed Simon, money. Simon Dixon bought Bitcoin at 10 cents. I would have borrowed Wayne, money. Wayne, Wayne bought, <laughs> Wayne bought uh, you know, who I do the podcast with, he bought Bitcoin at you know, a dollar. 
You know what I mean? Like so like, crazy. You know it, but I, yeah, you just have to get it. You have to get. It doesn't matter. Like, but I'm what I'm trying to say is that those feelings are all the feeling that you had in 2016 is the same feeling that some new guy is going to have in 2024, 25, excuse me now, uh, looking at a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You're, you're not, you're, you're, you're very, very early. This is less, less than 1% of rich people even have any Bitcoin. So it, we're, we're, we're trem- tremendously early. There's going to be a lot of great gains, uh, but it, it's going to be, um, you know, Bitcoin only just, and, and, and don't try to time it. I mean, that's, that's the main thing. Everybody who's trying to time it is going to screw up. The next Bitcoin blow off top might not come from retail investors like in past cycles. It could be driven by the ultra wealthy reallocating their portfolios. Fred Krueger notes that if millionaires and billionaires decide to increase their Bitcoin exposure from a negligible 0.01% to just 2%, that small adjustment could unleash an avalanche of capital into Bitcoin, fueled by money currently tied up in real estate, bonds, and overpriced stocks. Anyway guys, before we go, if you want to stay most up to date on the crypto and Bitcoin world, make sure to subscribe to my daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. It's a concise resource for the latest expert predictions, breaking news, and top on-chain analysis, trusted by over 50,000 subscribers for insightful crypto investment information. Don't miss out on the opportunity to stay informed in the crypto market. The link is in the description below. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and that it provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.